driver's way good so there's a a self-righteous arrogance in Mormons as they just accept and uh, it's called faith in everything the church tells them from their youth it's all they're indoctrinated in in primary songs and the lessons and you grow up to be a teenager and you get all the scripture stories in seminary church conference you get bombarded by it and most of it's repetitive if you go through the manuals it's the same lessons every year every four years technically doing different scriptures from the quad <clears throat> and they don't the church doesn't teach investigation doesn't teach research you just accept whatever is presented to you and the interpretation that the manuals give you or that is spoken at pulpits and Mormons just believe BYU professor teaches how to develop maturing faith by diligently seeking that's complete false doctrine but it's in tune with Mormons they hear the code words faith seek BYU professor <laughs> see when I was a kid when I heard the word mature I went oh yeah don't like that word because it was insulting me it was telling me I'm too young to know I'm too young to do and that was unacceptable to me and that's what he's doing he's saying that the BYU college students aren't mature in their faith he's insulting them but he doesn't see it he's got to give a talk and so he gives his talk mature faith and he doesn't realize he's being abusive it's that blinders that Mormons get because they just believe and so Mormons will insult everyone not realizing what they're doing because in so doing they're projecting that they themselves are guilty of what they're accusing but they don't see it as accusing they see it as black and white church tells us this so that's what's white and anything else is black and uh, and so you get the primary songs that reinforce this if by chance you meet a, a frown do not let it stay quickly turn it upside down and smile that frown away this is assuming that people just get depressed for the sake of getting depressed that there's no external causation you know your mother is shot and killed right in front of you the last thing you want to tell that child is to smile but people just don't think there's the primary song, Faith is Knowing the Sun Will Rise. Well, is it faith or is it knowing? Because you don't know if it hasn't happened, if the consequences haven't happened. So if it's still nighttime or twilight, you still don't know. You see the sun, 
Well, you don't see the sun, but you see the light starting to rise up above the mountains. And then finally it pokes over. Now you know. But this false doctrine in primary is teaching kids, oh, I have faith, therefore I know. And when it comes to the key essentials about the church, all of it is a lie. We're not a restoration of the Gospels Jesus, his church, because his was a restoration that failed. were supposed to be a restoration of King David. If not all the way back to Adam. And when you realize that the Gospels Jesus has too many problems in the texts and then you assign him supernatural abilities Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. You've now added Constantine's God that he created. The Nicene Council, Constantine created God, called him Jesus, as part of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, rolled into one. And yet, despite this supernatural ability, Jesus was able to be flesh on earth, such that he could eat and drink and talk and be comprehended by men. Can't mix. It has to be physical, 100% in the reality. You create supernatural, it's no longer real. By definition. And so Mormons don't realize it. They just believe. You now we're restoring Jesus' church. We're the church of the Gospels, Jesus. They don't seek, as he should be telling Mormons to seek getting a, a Greek-English lexicon, a Hebrew-English lexicon, an Egyptian-English lexicon, which technically is a sign list, and a vocabulary, or a grammar, and a grammar. church doesn't want Mormons to pursue ancient languages, to pursue different translations of the scriptures. <clears throat> Our church history never happened. Yeah, Joseph Smith is real, Sidney Rigdon, Senior, Junior, Hiram, Oliver Cowdery, Brigham Young, Peter C. Kimball. But the history in our canon never happened. That's not a true history. Mormons just believe it. They don't comprehend that you've got a supernatural physical deity he and his father levitating above the ground in a pillar of light that are able to show their full glory to Joseph Smith who hasn't been baptized who hasn't had his initiatories in the temple and passed through the veil to become a high priest and a king Melchizedek a Christ 
because Mormons don't believe that. They don't believe they become Christ in the temple. And so they just accept, oh, it was Moroni? Okay. Not Nephi? Yeah, whatever. Okay. Because Mormons believe it's the true church. Mormons believe that whatever they're told is true and is not a lie. Is not deception. And so they don't seek. They don't investigate. As those who didn't grow up Mormon have to do. Book of Mormon. Well, if Moroni is not true, guess what? There was no plates. And guess what? There aren't. And so everything that follows, Book of Mormon is not a history of the ancient indigenous people. It's not a translation from, or a revelation, as the church wants to call it now. Because the plates aren't real. They didn't happen. The Mormons just believe. And it's weird. Because I deciphered Paleo-Hebrew. I actually sought out how Joseph Smith was a translator of the King Follett Discourse's retranslation of the Biblical Hebrew text. I had to decipher Paleo-Hebrew to do it. And I come to Utah, and Mormons say, oh no, you can't do that. Only the president of the church can do that. You're not authorized. But then they'll listen to apologists. Oh, we found these other plates in the Middle East. Oh, we find other records. We found the name Alma as a man's name. We found the geography. And they won't listen to me? There's something wrong there. Because all the apologists self-fulfill the Mormon faith. Faith promoting. I come along and I'm the real faith promoting because I produced the results. But nope. Mormons don't want results. They want to mature their faith. They want to keep faith eternally. Never finding out what truth is. Ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Mormons do not understand that Brigham Young did not properly succeed Joseph Smith. We're not taught the succession crisis. We didn't even know such a phrase existed. Now I did. You can now Google search succession crisis and it'll show up for the LDS church when Joseph Smith was martyred, assassinated, murdered. So Mormons have believed that Joseph Smith was murdered by the mob. Not an inside job. So as a result, all that Mormons are taught, they automatically believe because they only have faith. Faith without works. And it's safe in their little bubble. 
until somebody like me comes along and threatens that faith, challenges that faith, presents alternative faith, which is based on knowledge, which is based on consequences and results. And all of a sudden, Mormons start throwing out accusations. Uh, you're apostate. You're evil. You're not the president of the church. You can't tell us what to think and believe. I don't feel good when I hear you speak. I sense a dark presence when you talk. This is the trap the church has set for Mormons. And that trap causes their arrogance and their high and mighty, holier than thou attitude. Where they think that they can send death threats, hate comments. And even, at the very least, a thumbs down. Because after all, the church is true. Their faith is correct. And they don't need to prove it. They don't need the results. They don't need the resulting consequences. The works of fruit. Because nobody can judge faith. Mormons are safe. They can be at peace. Because nobody is challenging them. No one is daring to molest or make afraid. And they just throw out the religion card. It's my religion. You have to accept my religion. You have to accept my truth. No, we don't. You don't have any truth. All you have are feelings and beliefs. You've got nothing to show for it. And we can't accept that because it's not real not something that we can produce for ourselves to judge whether your faith is true or not. We go out on missions. I believe the church is true, but you put in, I know the church is true, so you're bearing false witness, because you don't have a witness. You never produce the results. So you're lying. And you demand others accept you and join the church. Because you said it. Why aren't they joining? Missions are so hard. It's because you're trying to force agency. Rather than letting them find out for themselves producing the results, producing the fruit. But the church can't let you do that. Because like I said, there is no such God. There is no such church history. There is no such plates. Brigham Young is not the true successor. Prophets know it. That's why they keep playing you for chumps. That's why they played the NAACP for chumps, giving only ten million for a hundred and fifty years of racist abuse. 
They're even using old photographs. Because Nelson wasn't even involved with this. But there he is, right there in the front. Taking all the credit. And yeah, he has to approve it. But he didn't meet with them. It was Razband and one other guy. So this is... This is the collapsing of Mormonism. It's imploding. Because it's hollow inside the church. It's hollow inside Mormon beliefs. And so you get a faith crisis when something pushes your beliefs beyond what you can tolerate. If you had knowledge, you wouldn't have a faith crisis, would you? You'd already know and have left the church. <laughs> then you start realizing once you have left, when you have broken the chains, there's a the theme song. This doctrine is also shared by Plato in his Allegory of the Cave in the Republic. But, um, yeah, once you break the chains, other Mormons will turn on you, just as Plato says in his Allegory. And that is so true. And I was curious, I first heard was taught Plato's Allegory in the Cave in high school, and as we read over it, I was inspired. It was like, oh, I now see. <laughs> but over the course of years after, I fulfilled that as I became the guy who had broken the chains and was experiencing what Plato was talking about such a person would experience. So thus I fulfilled it, reproduced it, and can bear testimony that it's true. A real, honest, truthful testimony that it's true. Not lies going according to the flow, saying what we're supposed to say as zombies, brainwashed, controlled, compliant. And the sad thing is, is that the church is trying to destroy you, and you praise him for it. You thank the O God for a prophet. I'm trying to save you and rescue you. And for that, you want me dead. You want me silenced. And that's the real tragedy. <laughs>